Hey guys, Kevin Nathan, another movie for guys, and this movie we're reviewing, I've been wanting to see this movie for a while, I just never really got the chance to till now. Um, I remember I wanted to see this, and I was even considering possibly seeing this in the theaters, but it wasn't getting the best reviews, and I really didn't know how this movie was going to be going into it. But finally I've seen it, and you know, better late than never, that movie of course is Money Monster. I didn't really know how this movie was going to be. I mean, the trailers really intrigued me, definitely. The trailers really intrigued me, I liked the tone of this movie, I thought the plot was really interesting, and I mean, things like this have happened before. The situation this movie's depicting has happened before, and I thought that was something that sounded really interesting. Um, but I will admit that some of the trailers did show a bit too much, and I did feel like I got a lot of the movie in the trailer, and some of the best moments were definitely in the trailer. So I really didn't know how this movie was gonna be, if it was gonna be able to hold up as a actually, you know, as a movie and um show amazing scenes that were in the trailer. And, um, as it turns out, Money Monster, I think, is a good thriller, definitely. It's not a perfect thriller. It definitely has a lot of problems, but for the most part, it was a lot, it was, it was definitely really good. It was as good as I think as the trailers, um, made it out to be. It wasn't great, but it was really good, and I'll definitely talk about that. So, let's get to the plot of Money Monster, because the plot of this movie, I think, is really interesting. Basically, we focus on, um, our main character is Lee Gates. He is this, uh, TV persona, basically, and he kind of makes like Wall Street and money he tries to make it fun basically make it entertaining in this show that he has and the show he has is I, I don't know the show he has is called Money Monster which is why the movie's called Money Monster but basically this guy Kyle in the middle of a broadcast um Jack O'Connell's character Kyle ends up holding him up basically he has a gun threatens to shoot and also has a bomb basically and he's basically has beef against Lee for personal reasons that I'm not gonna discuss but while this is going on, they have to try to remain very taut about it because they are on TV. Uh, while his, basically, um, I don't really know what to call her exactly. I, what, what, would ex what would I exactly call her? Uh, she's like the director of the show, Patty. Basically, she is to try to keep Lee as calm as possible so something bad doesn't happen. And that basically is the plot of Money Monster. And uh, basically, you know, the, the movie is them trying to really keep the situation very controlled and very calm. And not let things get, you know, um, escalate and go over and make the broadcast has go a wire basically so basically that's the plot of the movie there are a lot of things i think that work here and a lot of things that don't but let's get into the plot but let's get into the movie more for starting off with the cast now obviously this movie definitely has star talent i mean anyone can tell you that george clooney is great or julia roberts is great but let's get to their performances in this movie overall because yes they are very talented actors but how do they work in this movie george clooney for me i think did a really good job my problem is mainly his character i think the character of lee gates he did a really great job i mean this very charming tv persona you know really trying to cater to an audience trying to make the subject really interesting. I think he did a very good job with that. In the beginning, you can tell he's also not the nicest guy, but then once the situation takes place, I feel like he kind of lost um, character a little bit. He became very serious and very controlled, which I get he was trying to be, but it seemed more like it was more of, oh, Julia Roberts want to be this way. I kind of wanted him to be a bit, to have some of that charm, because I was actually really enjoying the wit that his character had, and he kind of loses it the second that Jack O'Connell comes on screen, and that was something that I thought was was kind of a problem because while I do like George Clooney in this movie, I really couldn't understand. Are we not supposed to like his character? Is he supposed to be, you know, a dick? Is he really this charming? Is this just something he's doing for TV? The movie never really explains that, and the movie doesn't really get into his character in the way it should, and because of that, I'm not going to say it was wasted because it definitely was not wasted, but I do feel the movie did not develop him as as much as they should have, and I definitely would have liked to see more development on his part. I would like to see a little bit more wit as well, maybe to keep the situation not as, you know, crazy as it is, especially because they're trying to keep things controlled. I thought it was very interesting. I thought he did a good job definitely in some of the series scenes, especially one scene where he's trying to appeal to some, I think, stockbrokers basically, and try to you know, get them to help him out and figure out what's going on. I thought he did a very good job. I definitely did enjoy his performance, but for me, his character, I think, falls a little bit flat, and because that, it did kind of decrease um, how good his acting was. Julia Roberts, on the other hand, I thought did a great job in this movie. She was fantastic as her character, Patty Finn, because you can tell that she's the one that wants to keep things as controlled as possible, and she does a really great job with that, and I th honestly think she should have been the main character of this movie, because just the way that she's handling this movie, most of the movie is her commanding, you know, Lee to stay controlled and have say all these things. I would have really wanted to see her be the main character. What's her life like? We don't really get into. We see that she's a director and everything, and that she has a relationship with Lee, and they clearly 
clearly have worked together for a while, but other than that, we don't really find out that much more about her character, and I kind of wanted to find out more about her. I think she did a great job, though, especially in scenes where things are really intense, and she's the one that's trying to keep things, you know, as calm as possible and try to keep the situation, um... It's very controlled, and I think she did a really great job with that, because you keep waiting for her to crack, or you keep waiting for her to have that moment where she's just going to, you know, explode, and she never has that moment, and I think she did a great job with that, I really did love her character. However, for me, the real star of this movie and the person I think steals the show from everyone was Jack O'Connell. I mean, I've talked about this guy before. He is an incredible actor. You know, he was in Startup. He was in 71. He was amazing in both of those movies. I did not see Unbroken, but Startup 71, he was amazing in both of those. And uh, here he gives another amazing performance. I think this is probably his most challenging role yet because it's the first role that he's not playing someone that's British. And he's trying to have an American accent. It's a Boston accent as well. I will admit there are a few times where the accent comes out. But that's just because Jack O'Connell is a very thick accent, so it's kind of hard to hide it. But he really did a fantastic job in this movie. I really loved his character because Kyle Budwell really is not the bad guy of this movie. I'm not going to explain why, but you really understand this guy. I mean, obviously, you're not really condoning the lengths that he's going, but you can totally understand why he's so pissed at Lee and really what's going on with him and why, as you know, much as Lee can try to you know fix the situation, really this guy just wants answers because something went really wrong with Lee and. Lee he has wronged him in many ways, again, that I'm not going to spoil, but Kyle is just seeking answers, and I think he did a really great job with that, I really loved his character, and you really do understand him, and I think definitely he was the best horns in the movie, definitely he did a great job, and he definitely... You understand the morality of his character. The problem is, I think his character was so focused on that the other characters just didn't really get the focus that they really deserved. And I think as good as he was, he does kill some of the movie mainly because they're so folk. We're so focused on Kyle's character that the other t uh, two central characters of this movie don't really get the focus that they deserved. And for me, it loosens some of the impact of the movie. But overall, I thought Jack O'Connell as an actor did a great job, gave another really great performance, and I can't wait to see this guy finally. An Oscar. I don't think this this is definitely not going to be the movie that gets him an Oscar, but you can tell he is trying to do more mainstream things, which is awesome because he is really an amazing actor, and I'm really hoping that he continues doing amazing roles because he really is fantastic and definitely is going to be someone that I think we're going to talk about. Um, and is going he's going to have that big role very soon. We're going to be talking about him, and definitely look out for Jack O'Connell because he is already uh killing in every role he's been in, and definitely this movie proves that he definitely is on a roll. And if that was it, if the movie was just focusing on these three characters, I would have said this movie's pretty solid, besides using the two, you know, characters not as well as they should have, but unfortunately, that's not the case. They're not the only characters we're focusing on this movie, but like I said, the movie's so focused on Kyle, there are two other characters that we're focusing on, that being from Katrina, uh, from Katriana Balfe, of course, from Outlander, and from Dominic West, of course, from The Affair. Now, it is kind of weird to see Noah and Claire, uh, in this relation, because they're supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend, we eventually find out but um these two characters you just don't really care in the way that you do i mean these two characters seem like they were only there to cause trouble they were only there to make the situation really bad i mean there's this point where um uh catriona balf's character she gets on screen and she basically admits the truth but it's like what are you doing she's making the situation even more intense she's making things really bad and she just comes across as really unnecessary i didn't really see the purpose of her character dominic west i did see a little bit more but i just didn't really care about either either of their characters, especially what ends up happening with Dominic West, this twist that happens with him, I just didn't really care in the way the movie wanted me to, unfortunately. It's not that they're bad actors, because they definitely do sell it, and, you know, Katrina Balfe is an incredible actress, as well as Dominic West, they're both fantastic, but... They just don't really sell it like they should. I didn't really see the... Not the point of their character. So I definitely saw the point of Dominic West's character. But Catriona Balfe, I didn't really see the um, you know the point of her. But overall, I thought they did a, they did a good job. It's just their characters just weren't really that um, important to the plot. And really, in the end, just seemed like they were there to basically cause trouble and make the situation even worse than it already was. Which, obviously, you know, kind of ruins their characters overall. And also, it was really unfortunate, because I was really looking forward to these two in the movie. I thought, all right, this is Katrina Balfe, you know, not everyone watches Outlander. This will finally give us, you know, the chance to see her in a movie and give an amazing performance. But no, she really didn't have much of anything to do except for one scene that I thought was really dumb. And Dominic West, really, you know, like I said, he's just there, I think, to cause trouble. And he as well didn't really get the chance to shine either. And these are two actors and actresses that I think deserve a lot better. And hopefully, they do eventually get that chance. This movie just isn't that, and in 
instead they're kind of pointless and I really left the movie saying their characters could be completely cut out of it and the movie would have still been the same. It's just one of those things where the characters are more plot devices than they are actually full-fledged characters. And then everyone else, like I said, they didn't really get their big moment. Like, for example, uh, Christopher Denham, characters like that. Um, he plays a central role in this movie, but he doesn't really do that much. He doesn't really have that big moment that we're waiting for. And that really is my main problem. Is, like I said, the movie's so focused on Jack O'Connell's character that we don't really get to focus on the other characters. Um, but overall, I think the cast was good. They definitely did a good job. Let's get to the directing here by Jodie Foster, because a lot of people think this is actually her debut, and it's not. She's done some smaller films, like the beaver which i heard was incredible but this is her first um like big um film that she's come out with you know this is not that this is the first one that's in wide release it's not limited and for the most part i thought she did a good job you definitely feel the intensity in the film but i also like that she did put some com some comedic moments into this because the show that you know george clooney is on money monster it's supposed to be a very light-hearted show it's taking serious topics and kind of making them funny it's kind of like last week tonight a little bit that's kind of what his show reminded me of is that's like last week tonight where they take, you know, big news stories and they kind of make them fun. That's kind of what, um, George Clooney show is like, and those moments, I think, really do shine. Some of the intensity, though, you never really feel it in the way you should, because I think some of it is, there's too much, they don't really balance the tone as well as they should, definitely, but I think Jodie Foster, she did a good job dragging this movie. I'm not going to pin the blame on her, I don't think she was bad here. I think the main problem with this movie, mainly, is the screenplay. That really is my main problem. There, there are a lot of problems here with the screenplay. Like I said, this is not really a characterization movie. A lot of these characters come across as very flat, very cookie-cutter, and and we've seen characters like before, like, for example, Lee Gates. They give you a good, like, I'd say 12 minutes before this actually happens, and that's actually my biggest problem with the movie. And it's something I don't think a lot of people have talked about. For me, the hostage situation, which is obviously a very intense situation, I thought came way too early into the movie. For me, I don't think it should have come into about 20 minutes so we could get to learn these two characters more, because the movie doesn't really give you a lot of time to do that. You know, you're taken to a broadcast, Lee Gates starts his broadcast, and then very quickly, Kyle Budwell shows up. Up. And I honestly was really surprised with how quickly the situation was, but for me, I think the movie would have benefited if it was a little bit longer, and... I really think that's one of the biggest problems is that Kyle, you know, was a great character, but his character was completely, you know, everyone, everything really focused so much on him that the other characters we didn't really get to learn as much about. I would have wanted to know more about Lee. I would have wanted to know more about Patty Fenn, and we didn't really get to know a lot more about them, and I wanted to see that, and that was one of the biggest problems of the screenplay. Also, the movie, the comedic moments, not a lot of them land very well because they're happening when they're supposed to be a very intense situation, and that really did not work for me. It feels like they wanted to throw all this, you know, comedic stuff in here and kind of parody Wall Street, things like that. And the movie really doesn't, you know, do that as well as it should have. I think the screenplay, the intensity you felt when you're in that newsroom, when you go outside of the newsroom, it feels like a different movie. And it really didn't work in the way it should. I definitely did not really enjoy that as much as it wanted to, because at first it seems like, oh, this movie's trying to be like a small film. But then... When you go out of the newsroom and you focus on characters like Dominic West or Catriona Balfe, it feels more like this is trying to be like a, you know, like a legal film or something like that. It doesn't really work in the way that it, you know, that they want it to. For me, that just didn't really work, and I think really one of the biggest issues with the screenplay. The cinematography here is really good. Definitely really did enjoy it. I think the newsroom, you know, that looked like a very realistic show. They did a very good job with that, and uh, that's something I really did enjoy. Not really a lot to say about the cinematography. I will say towards the end, the cinematography photography was really good when they went outside there was actually some intense stuff there um but the score here i thought was okay nothing amazing with the score i thought the score was pretty good the editing like i said though that's a big problem because i do feel the movie was a bit too short i was surprised that the movie was as short as it was i thought this movie would be longer for me i think this movie should have been at least two hours at least i mean the movie would have benefited a, a lot more if it was two hours you could have told a much more concise story and a lot of the arcs just don't really feel warranted and a lot of the decisions that the characters make make, they kind of just come out of left field, and it feels like they just kind of threw those in just to add tension, and it doesn't really work in the way you want it to, and that's something else, that the intensity in the film, you feel it, but just not in the way the movie wants you, especially the last act. The last act, I felt, was very underwhelming, honestly, because a lot of the decisions they're making in the movie, to me, felt very implausible, and that's something that I really think the movie needs to think about, is how can we make this plausible? This is more movie knowledge than is actual knowledge, you know, the movie, clearly, they did not do their homework in the way they should have, I think, and that's something that the movie I don't really think got right. I mean, they're trying to parody certain things, and the movie's not really smart enough to do that, in my opinion. 
So overall, Money Monster, I didn't think was a, you know, really not a perfect movie. I think the first two acts were really solid, but the third act definitely did lose a lot of steam. And because that, but I, and because of that, I am going to end up giving Money Monster... A 3.5 out of 5 or a B. I don't think this is at all a bad movie in any sense. It's mainly just how underwhelming it was and because of how the plot was and, you know, between comedic and dramatic tones, the movie doesn't fully understand that really. It's very underutilized. A lot of the characters don't really get the moments that they need. But would I recommend this? I mean, yeah, I'd say this is more of go see it on TV or see it when it comes, you know, rent it when it comes out on Blu-ray. This is not a go see in the theater immediately kind of film. Definitely comes across as very underused characters, not as intense as I wanted to be, and definitely I wasn't as into it as I wanted to be, but it is entertaining nonetheless, and overall I would recommend it, just not highly recommend it, and I'd say really it's more of a rental, things like that, but really take it as you want it. If you think you're going to enjoy it, then see it, but I don't really think, I definitely think that there were better things to see um, in this month than this movie. So, overall, guys, my review Money Monster. Let me know if you guys saw this movie you have seen. By the way, quick side note, why did this movie come out when nothing else was coming out? I thought that was really weird. You easily could have put Alistair Looking Glass and Money Monster. Alistair Looking Glass, I think, would have made a lot more money that way. Now, I get that they want Money Monster to make a lot of money, but, uh, which, uh, yeah, pun there. Not unnecessary pun, but, uh, that was not, that was not, um, you know, intentional, guys. It was just a pun that had to happen, but... I don't understand why they put this out when no one, nothing else came out. I get that they wanted to make a lot, but it, you know, I don't know how much it made. But overall, guys, remember you guys saw the Money Monster. You have seen it. Love to hear your thoughts on it. What did you think of everything I said? Do you agree that some of the characters didn't really get the arc that they needed? That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for one of two things, either for Outlander or for um, Girl, or for uh, the Girl Meets World episode. The second part already leaked online, so I'm going to watch that. Not leaked online, but it's on the Watch Disney Channel app. Or for the pilot of Outcast. One of those three things. I don't know which one's going to be for, but I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.